Hello everyone. I am Pranita Varma, PGT Chemistry, Kendriya Vidyalaya, Airport Station, Hint. Today I am taking up the topic volumetric analysis. So what do you mean by volumetric analysis? Volumetric analysis means to determine the unknown concentration of the sample by measuring its volume. Now, volumetric analysis is done by titration. So we can also say that it is also known as titration. Now in titration, the unknown concentration of a solution is reacted with a known concentration of the solution. And that known concentration of solution is known as standard solution. So let us take up this topic, volumetric analysis. Now aim of this experiment is to determine the molarity and the strength of NaOH using N by 20 oxalic acid solution. Now the word using N by 20 oxalic acid solution is there. So first of all, we have to prepare 100 ml of N by 20 oxalic acid solution. Now how to prepare N by 20 oxalic acid solution? For this we know that what is molarity? Molarity is the number of moles of solute per unit volume of solution in liters. Now number of moles of solute can also be written as Wb by Mb into 1000 by B. B if it is taken in N. Now we are preparing N by 20 oxalic acid solution so it is written as 1 by 20 and Wb the amount to be weight of oxalic acid and 126 is the molar mass of oxalic acid. And since we are preparing only 100 ml, so it is divided by 1000. So finally we get the weight that is 0 0.63 gram of oxalic acid. Now this much amount of oxalic acid is to be weighed for the preparation of N by 20 oxalic acid solution. Now let's perform this experiment. This is an electronic balance and using this electronic balance we will take the weight first of all we will place the watch glass on this electronic balance and note the readings, note the initial reading on the electronic balance and then we add oxalic acid solution and we cut accurately the 0.63 gram of oxalic acid. So I have already weighed this 0.63 grams of oxalic acid. Now next step is dissolve or add, transfer this oxalic acid from the watch glass into the beaker with the help of distilled water pouring from the wash bottle. Now this is the wash bottle, same as wash bottle. Now it is washed, this watch glass is washed thoroughly so that the particles stick on this watch glass is transferred completely into the beaker. Now dissolve this water, dissolve this oxalic acid in the beaker with the help of glass rod with constant stir. Now once it is dissolved in the distilled water, this is the distilled water I have taken in the wash bottle. Now it should be a clear solution. Now this is called a measuring flask. This is a 100 ml capacity of measuring flask. Now I take this measuring flask and place the funnel. This is the funnel over this measuring flask. And then transfer this oxalic acid solution in this measuring flask. Now this beaker is 
washed two three times so that whatever particles are sticking in this beaker they are transferred in this melting flask so it is washed thoroughly and then transferred in a melting flask again shake it thoroughly so as to get a homogeneous solution there is a calibrated mark over this measuring glass and i have to add water up to this calibrated mark now i'll start adding water with the help of wash bottle below this calibrated mark with constant stirring of this measuring glass now the last few drops are added in the measuring glass with the help of dropper so that the lower meniscus of the solution just touches at this calibrated mark now stop in this glass shake it thoroughly so that a homogeneous solution is created so this was the procedure by which we have prepared this n by 20 oxalic acid solution now the solution is prepared now next now for this we have to write observation and calculations now volume of solution prepared is 100 ml since it is of 100 ml capacity measuring flask now weight of watch glass that we have taken we have taken double one gram now weight of watch glass plus oxalic acid which added is w2 gram and the weight of oxalic acid solution used is w2 minus w so let it be w gram that we get that is 0.63 gram So 100 ml of M by 20 oxalic solution has been prepared. There are some precautions which is to be taken while preparing the solution. So watch glass must be dry and clean. Funnel should be washed thoroughly. Shaking of solution should be done to form a homogeneous solution, and distilled water should be used. Next. Now, now our. Uh, the next experiment that is to determine the molarity and strength of given and new solution provided n by 20 oxalic acid solution now we will perform this experiment that we have prepared n by 20 oxalic acid solution the materials required for this particular experiment first of all let us acquaint ourselves with the apparatus used during this volumetric analysis or titration now this is known as burette It is called burette. I'm taking it out from the burette stand. This one is burette stand, and this is white tile, which is kept over this burette stand to have a clear view of the color change. Now, this is the annual solution prepared, which is given for this experiment, and its molarity and strength is to be determined. so this is the given annual solution this is an indicator which is used during this method i told you that indicator shows the color change when the reaction is just completed since any which is also a colorless solution oxalic acid is also a colorless solution to show how the reaction is completed is indicated by the color change with the help of this indicator which is phenolphthalein other apparatus used are beakers these are beaker this is a conical flask this is funnel we know that and these are small beaker of 100 ml capacity now one more 
apparatus which is used during this titration that is this is a pipette and this is a pipette pump so i have put this pipette pump in this pipette so as to pipette out the solution so let's see how to perform this experiment so first of all burette is taken and all the apparatus first of all they should be thoroughly washed with a distilled water so let us wash this with distilled water these are already washed again i am showing this how to wash and rinse it rinsing means adding a small amount of water and it is shaken thoroughly throughout this burette so that all impurities are washed away so this is a stop cock open this stop cock and drain out the washings next it is now washed with distilled water now next step is rinse the burette with any oh solution so this is the annual solution so first of all rinsing means again adding a small amount of annual solution into the burette and then it is thoroughly rinsed thoroughly washed with annual solution Again, I am adding annual solution so as to rinse it completely. Now, open this stop cock and drain out all the washings. Now clamp this burette in a burette stand. Next step, fill the burette with annual solution. This is any solution. Now place a funnel over it, over the burette, and add any solution. Now remove this funnel from the unit. Now run out this excess annual solution so that the initial reading is at zero. So lower means this now touches at zero mm. So this annual is filled now. Now next step is we have to pipette out the oxalic acid in the conical flask. Again, all the apparatus has to be thoroughly washed with water. I have already washed this with water. Now again, since I have to pipette out oxalic acid, so again this is rinsed with oxalic acid solution. So pipette has to be rinsed with oxalic acid solution. So rinsing this, again adding a small amount, again take it, fill this. And then again drain out the complete solution 
and through this portion. So by using pipet pump, I have taken out oxalic acid solution. Now again, now pipet out 10 ml of oxalic acid solution. There is also a calibrated mark over this pipet. So I will pour, pour this oxalic acid solution. In a beaker and then pip it out. 10 ml of oxalic acid solution into a conical flask. Now the calibrated mark is there. So just I lower down this oxalic acid solution drop by drop until it just touches the lower meniscus touches the calibrated mark. Now this is taken out in a conical class. Oxalic acid, I am going to add phenolphthalein indicator. So, 2-3 drops of indicators indicator is added. This is a white tile kept over this. Now, run out this annual solution drop by drop with constant stirring this conical flask until we get a permanent light pink color. So the, it is coming and again it is decolorizing. So until we get a permanent light pink color, this process is carried out. Should be added drop by drop. So it should be light pink color. Now just see the pink color is coming but it is decolorizing. So until we get a permanent light pink color, that is the end point. The point at which the reaction is just completed. It should be added drop by drop. Constantly stuck. Study must be there. It is taking some time to de decolorize. So we are quite near to this end point. Now be very careful by adding this annual solution. Yes. So this is the light pink color which we get. Now just see, this is 2 now. 
So that was the end point, that is 10.1 really. Simply by adding one drop, I get it. I'm getting this dark pink color. So this is how, this is one reading I have taken. Now again, next, so this solution, again pip it out, oxalic acid solution into this clinical flask and again add two drops of indicator, phenolphthalein indicator and take second reading. So we have to take three, four, five, six reading until we get concordant reading. Concordant reading means two identical end point. Two identical readings are known as concordant reading. So this is how the reading is taken. I have taken up this, completed this process. Now let's check this part observation. So for observation part, this is the procedure which we have performed just now. The molarity of the given oxalic acid solution is N by 20 which we prepared it. Now, volume of oxalic acid solution used in titration is 10 ml. Now, this is the 10 ml capacity of this pipette. So, in every time we take 10 ml of oxalic acid in a conical flask and then we do the titration. So, this is the uh, tabular form by which we have to note down the reading. So, initial reading it was 0 and then final reading I got 10.1. And then V2 minus V1, 10.1 minus 0. So finally we get 10.1. Now let other readings, maybe it may be 10.3, some it may be 9.8. So until we get two exact same reading, two identical edge point, then only we can say that is a concordant reading. So after that, we have to do this calculation part. Now A1, M1, V1 is equal to A2, M2, V2. Now I am shifting this to board. This is the reaction involved during this titration. This is the formula of oxalic acid. It is reacting with NaOH and sodium oxalate is obtained and water is produced. Now A1, M1, V1 is equal to A2, M2, V2. Now A1 means for NaOH since M1, V1 are taken it as NaOH for oxalic acid it is M2, V2. So a1 means number of hydroxyl ion exchangeable and A2 is number of H plus ion since it is acid, number of H plus ion it is exchangeable. So just look at this formula in oxalic acid there are two H plus ions which are exchanged. So A2 the value of A2 will be 2 and for any OH there is only one hydroxyl ion which is exchanged. So the value of A1 is only 1. So this is how to put the value A1 and A2. And then just uh, see how calculation part is done. So A1 is 1 for NaOH since only one replaceable hydroxy line is there for NaOH. M1 we have to determine that is to determine the molarity of NaOH. And 10, I have written it as 10 points since I got 10.1. It may be 10.0. So let it be 10.0 is the reading which is the concordant during this calculation process. So let it be 10.0. And 2 that is A2 for oxalic acid that is number of replaceable H plus I. Now molarity of N, uh, oxalic acid which we prepared is M by 20. So I wrote this value M by 20. And volume of oxalic acid taken for each titration that is of 10 ml from pipette because the pipette is of capacity of 10 ml. So finally I got this M1 is equal to 1 by 10. So finally molarity is N by 10 that is of NaOH solution. So I am using this NaOH solution. I have already prepared this N by 10 molarity. Now next is to calculate the strength of NaOH solution. The formula for strength is molarity into molar mass. So molarity I just got 1 by 10 into molar mass of NaOH that is NaOH molar mass is 40. So finally I got the value and that unit is in gram per bit. So this is how the strength and molarity of this process is done or it is calculated. So we write the result that is molarity of the given NaOH solution and also the strength of the given NaOH solution with the given units. Now precautions, there are a few precautions which are to be taken. So addition of unit solution should be dropwise, it should be always kept added dropwise otherwise we will get it. Immediately we will get this dark pink color. 
Always use one or two, three drops of indicator. Never use more drops of indicator. And in every reading, for every reading which we are taking, same drops of indicator should be used. And the lower minister should be read for the colorless solution. Whatever reading which we measure, that lower minister should touch that particular. So it is calculated, lower minister should be read for the colorless solution. So that's it for this titration. Now similarly, we have only two titration in our syllabus. Our next titration is again, this was the titration in which we uh, took a strong base and weak acid. Now there is one more titration in our syllabus that is performed similarly. The only difference is that in this titration we have to prepare 100 ml of M by 20 sodium carbonate solution. So instead of oxalic acid, in this solution, we have taken sodium carbonate. It, it is a weak base. Now, same procedure is done. Same, uh, same method is performed. And for this, we have to weigh 0.53 grams of sodium carbonate to get M by 20 sodium carbonate solution. Next. Apparatus chemical procedure is exactly the similar as that in the previous experiment. Next. Now, to determine the molarity and strength of given hydro hydrochloric acid, provided M by 20 sodium carbonate solution. Now, in this method, the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and sodium carbonate is a weak base. Whereas the previous experiment, NUH is a strong base, whereas oxalic acid is a weak acid. So, it is just the reverse of this. So, during this experiment, the Indicator used is a methyl orange. Instead of an octane, we use the methyl orange. Otherwise, the procedure is same. So, the color change is indicated by yellow to from yellow to pink. As in previous experiment, we got the color change from colorless to light pink. And in this case, the color change is yellow to pink. Otherwise, this is the same procedure. This is how the same experiment is performed. It is performed titration as it was performed in the previous experiment. So that's it. Thank you.